Hi, I'm Eric Howra. I'm the director of the Lung Cancer Center of Excellence here at the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center. Uh, I'm here uh, today with Dr. Scott Antonia, who's the chair of the Department of Thoracic Oncology and the program leader for the immunotherapy department at Moffitt. And we're here for part three of Behind the Science, where we're going to talk about immunotherapy uh, and its role in the treatment of lung cancer. Um, Scott is also the uh -huh. project leader for one of our SPORE-funded projects that's using vaccines to treat small cell lung cancer. So Scott, thanks for taking time out today. Sure. Um, can you describe to us what the immune system is and, and, and what its role is in, in, in protecting us from, from germs and other pathogens? The immune system is highly specific and extremely powerful. We all know that we get infections and are exposed to infectious agents on a daily basis and yet the immune system can clear those infectious agents uh, very efficiently and very powerfully. Uh, so tell us about uh, how vaccines work, both in the context of pre preventing diseases, like of flu, for instance, and, and also tell us how vaccines are used to actually treat diseases like cancer. That's a key distinction here. When we talk about uh, vaccines or immunotherapy for cancer, we're talking about, by and large, uh, therapeutic vaccines, that is, trying to get people's own immune system to kill their own cancer. So cancer, much like invading microorganisms, should be perceived as foreign by the immune system. Cancers, lung cancer, is genetically unstable. And so there are multiple mutations in multiple genes. And these, these mutant genes code for proteins. Proteins that when they're made off of those abnormal genes are also abnormal. And so they should be perceived by the immune system as foreign, and they are actually. If you look in uh, the, uh, the blood or lymph nodes of pe people with cancer, you can find lymphocytes, those cells that kill tumor cells or uh, virally infected cells, et cetera. You can find those lymphocytes that are specific and reactive towards the patient's own cancer. The problem is, the problem is they may not be present in a high enough frequency, or really the bigger problem is that uh, the cancer uh, has developed ways to evade that immune system, uh, ways that microorganisms can't. And so vaccines are uh, therapeutic tumor vaccines, which is uh, one of the things that uh, we focus on here at, at Moffitt. Uh, are designed to uh, boost the number of those uh, lymphocytes that are reactive against uh, the, the tumor cells. So you've been involved in, I think, two very exciting uh, aspects of immunotherapy here at Moffitt. The first is the use of the P53 vaccine, uh, and the second is the development of the PD-1 therapy. Um, can you tell us a little bit more detail about the work you've done with the P53 vaccine for small cell lung cancer? and then afterwards uh, talk about the uh, PD-1 therapies and, and, and the excitement that this has brought. Yeah, so we have developed a number of different vaccines. One uh, that Dr. Howard just mentioned, and that is uh, the, P the P53 vaccine. That is uh, a personalized vaccine, a vaccine that we manufacture from cells from the blood of every individual patient. So we make individual vaccines for each patient. And these vaccines are what we call gene-modified cell-based vaccines. So we use a form of gene therapy to modify um, important cells of the immune system that, whose role is to turn on immune responses. We call them dendritic cells. And we modify them through this uh, gene therapy techniques uh, in such a way that they then turn on the immune system uh, so that the lymphocytes are reactive to this protein that is abnormally expressed in 90% of small cell lung cancers, and it's P53. We first tested that in phase one and phase two trials, and it, it looked promising. Now, the vaccine itself actually produced responses, meaning shrunk people's uh, cancers about 5% of the time. But really what is much more exciting, uh, because 5% isn't good enough for us, but what, what is much more exciting is we've discovered that people who get chemotherapy after the vaccine respond far more frequently than they would if they didn't get the vaccine. And so there's this synergy uh, between chemotherapy given after the vaccine with, with the vaccine. 
We also have uh, in development here as well a vaccine for patients who have lung adenocarcinoma, so a non-small cell lung cancer. And similarly, it is a gene-modified cell-based vaccine. But here, the cells are not from the patients uh, themselves. And so it is more of an off-the-shelf or out-of-the-freezer vaccine. It doesn't need to be manufactured for each individual patient. And this is looking very exciting for non-small cell lung cancer. So really it's the first time where there's been convincing evidence now that you can use an immunotherapy in lung cancer and produce very significant results. So there's a lot of enthusiasm about personalized medicine. Are there similar thoughts for uh, immunotherapy where you can actually figure out ahead of time which um, vaccine or PD-1 combination will work uh, for, for a certain patient or is this a new uh, frontier for research? Yeah, both. Mm -hmm. And so clearly uh, immunotherapy is personalized medicine, right? And you're getting patients own immune system to kill their own cancer. You're, you're, you're asking the patient's immune system to figure out what it is that is uh, abnormal about their own cancer, uniquely to their own cancer, and take advantage of that to kill it. Well, Scott, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your, your day today. I think this is another uh, excellent example of uh, translational science, bringing the uh, research from the laboratory directly to the uh, patient's bedside to improve outcome. Uh, for patients with lung cancer. We've seen a lot of exciting results of this type of therapy and expect uh, this um, when fused to molecular targeted therapy and tumor profiling to really uh, elicit some major impact uh, on, on uh, the cure rates for patients with lung cancer.